Uh, my name is uh, Sam Valifshi. I'm the master cultivator here at Microlab Farms. Uh, basically, I'm handling the not only the operations of the actual grow, but also the execution. They kind of go hand in hand. If you don't have your hand on the pulse of what's going on with the, these plants on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not really able to give what they need because uh, it changes so rapidly. This is our stacker model. Um, essentially, what you're able to do is you're able to grow potentially twice as much uh, production as you would in a single stack pod. Uh, because we have these LED full spectrum lights, that's really what allows us to maximize the space. When you use LED lights, there's a lot less heat being pushed out by those lights, so you don't need them to be as far away from the plants. That's why you notice when you look at these, they're like literally almost uh, like a couple, an inch or two inches away from the actual light. When you're using uh, HIDs or uh, metal halide or high pressure sodium, you need at least 24 inches away from those plants so you're not burning your tips. Uh, by doing that, also though, there's a lot of different factors that play into that. When, you're, when you have less heat, you have to make sure that your temperature in your pot is a lot higher. So we have these two AC units, we have uh, humidifier and dehumidifiers in the back, and those are all connected actually to a smart system over there that essentially gives us the stats every single second, even if we're not here. And there's different alarms and different settings uh, on, that, on that smart system so that if something goes off or something is not exactly where we need it to be, we can adjust it without even necessarily having to be here. Um, on top of that, we're able to plant uh, Sea of Green style, so we fit maybe 600 plants in here, whereas when you're doing in a basic model, you're only able to fit you know, 100 to 120 plants. So you're really able to maximize your production, be able to maximize your resin quality because you're using LEDs. And a lot of uh, the rear of the cans, there's reservoirs, where if you want to set up a fully automatic uh, water drip system, be able to line all your plants out and essentially reduce your, your manpower by like 50%. We also have huge Schaefer fans in the back, make sure that we have proper airflow to make sure that we're mitigating our powdery mildew issues, make sure that these buds are getting as much resin production as they possibly can, um, make sure they're getting really sturdy as well. I mean, all these different environmental factors really play a huge role, especially when you're in a contained space, because these plants grow naturally outside. They get the wind, they get the rain, they get the sun. And if you're not really dialing in all those different things, you get mediocre bud. I worked in uh, sh other shipping containers where essentially people took shipping containers and just tried insulating them and throwing lights in there and, and making the most of it. And when you do it that way, there's a lot of variables that uh, aren't answered. You know, there's, are you, fully, are you actually fully sealed? Was the shipping container decontaminated before you converted it? You know, because you have to worry about mold issues, fungus issues, bug issues, all these different cont contaminants. Um, here, this truly is uh, a laboratory setting. I've never worked in a shipping container or even a grow um, that's been, been fully converted as clean as this. Uh, and cleanliness really is one of the pinnacle points of being able to have a, a, a successful grow because you can have amazing bud, you can have amazing genetics, but if you have mold issues or if you have bug issues, all of that can really go to waste at the, at the end of your grow. Um, also, to really have engineers and have uh, lights like this really changes your ability to maximize your plant. Typically, when you have a plant like this, uh, there's going to be a lot more leaf and a lot less bud because that leaf is, pr is protecting the plant from the high heat and from the high intensity light. When you're using LEDs, you end up having to uh, strip away a lot more leaf and in doing so, you end up getting a lot more bud and a lot more weight out of it. That's why a lot of people talk about LEDs getting you know, potentially twice as much weight as uh, HID light would get. On top of that, the smart system, being able to have your pulse and, and your, your eye on exactly what's going on every second is priceless. I mean, because these plants really at any given moment, so, something can happen, you don't know. Like if the lights go out, if the fans go out, if the humidifier uh, stops working and all of a sudden it's 90% humidity in here, you know, you, you really, I've seen a lot of people lose crops and, and really lose uh, production just on one mistake happening in one day and, and they couldn't get to it within really that minute or that hour because if you're not 
in your grow every single second and every single moment, there's always a potential for failure. When you have a smart system and you have all these different uh, automatic systems set up, there's a lot less chance for failure. When you grow outdoor, there's guaranteed to be mold and bugs, right? It's more about accepting the fact that you're in, you're in an outdoor environment. You're not in a laboratory setting. When you're dealing with the environment, what you're trying to do is control that environment to the best of your, to best of your ability. And sometimes that means that you do have to section off and quarantine different areas to make sure that it doesn't get to the rest of your crop, but you're not gonna necessarily get rid of it. When you're working in a laboratory setting like this in a really controlled environment, be able to control every step of the process from clone to plant to harvest, you know, the potential from having bugs always to having zero bugs is, is really the difference. You can have a full grow, never see mold, never see a bug once in an indoor setting. In an outdoor setting, there's no possibility that you're never gonna see a bug and you're never gonna see mold. It's just not possible. The quality of bud, when not only growing indoor, but when growing with LEDs, uh, I've never seen the resin production that I've seen under LEDs. I mean, we're talking, these plants are completely coated. Uh, and yeah, with, with HIDs, you can get that to a certain extent, but you don't also get the same weight. Because you're able to de-leaf and because you're able to get uh, light penetration all the way down to the bottom, you're able to get that intensity without those heat problems, these plants don't stress out. And they get, not only are you getting super, super resinous buds, but you're getting like footballs, you're getting fist-sized buds. And when you compare that to outdoor, you know, yeah, sure, you'll get the mass quantity of bud and you, and you can grow plants that are the size of a building, but they'll never have the resin quality and they'll never have the terpene production. To be honest, I think the ideal fit is, is anybody from boutique to, to full commercial. Uh, if, you're plan on, if you plan on growing indoor um, and you plan on growing high quality bud, because the difference between indoor and outdoor really comes to resin quality and terpene quality. When you're growing outdoor, you're growing for mass, mass production. A lot of times there's different people doing extraction for that and, and they're throwing away a lot of the actual flower. When you're growing indoor, this flower is, is really by far the most exceptional flower that you will find. You get much better uh, control, and you also get higher intensity light. Uh, when you, yeah, when you're doing the sun, you get a, a broader spectrum potentially, but you don't get the same intensity. Uh, and, and, and when you're talking about the customer, as far as what type of fit this would be uh, for different growers, really, if you're doing boutique style, it's perfect because you get to control your environment. You get to have a, a individual space that's designated just for that grow. You're not gonna be bringing in outside contaminants. You're not gonna be bringing outside problems. Um, and if you wanna really have that super high quality flower, that's really what you need to do. When you go into a facility and you go into a building and you need to turn that into a grow, you essentially have to refab that whole entire building. You have to tear down everything that's in there. You have to remove the, the foundation. You have to set up irrigation systems. You essentially have to tear down the building without tearing it down and then rebuild it so that it can actually, actually be a grow. When you get a pod like this, it's already prefab. All you have to do is place this pod in your building and you already have it, have it set up. So if you end up having to move or go to a different, uh, different place, you don't have to worry about the fact that you completely destroy the building on the inside, lose potentially uh, down payments on the, on the facility, uh, lose time and money on engineers and electricians and, and plumbers. You can take those pods and move them to any facility. You move out of state, you can move them out of state. If you move them out of the country, you can move them out of the country. It's, it's really genius. I think if we're, going to talk, if we're going to talk about the future of marijuana growing, I think shipping containers really is uh, the best route for a couple different reasons. Yeah, in California, we have like these beautiful seasons all year round, and some people can grow plants essentially all year round with you know, some su supplemental lighting. But when we start ex expanding to other states and this becomes federally legal, you don't get those same summer months essentially all year round. You have monsoons, you have tornadoes, you have hurricanes, you have uh, snow, you have ice, you have all these different issues. And if, and if you're able to grow inside, inside a shipping container, you're able to grow five harvests a year. You're able to perpetually grow and always keep that 
that revenue going. Um, on top of the fact that if you're, if for some reason something happens to your building, or if you have to move, or if something changes and you, you expand even further, you have these essentially mobile grow pods that you're able to take anywhere with your business. It's a one-time investment that you don't have to keep on tearing down and rebuilding every single time something new happens in your business.